Hey, Mike. This is Stu. How are you today? Hello, Stu. Uh, just looking at your history, I, I, you know, of course, I had Wikipedia up, and I'm reading about Stu Cook, the legendary, oh, yeah. the legendary bass player. I love the fact that you and Doug Clifford are still playing shows together. Like the history for you two guys, I guess you and Cosmo really are the inseparable duo, huh? Yeah, we are double trouble, man. One of the greatest rhythm sections ever in in rock history. Well, and, thank you very much. Well, you still that. have that dynamic. Obviously, you you obviously get along with him. You you oh, yeah. you know, and you you still play off one another because you wouldn't be out doing this <laughs> were that not the case, I guess. Well, exactly, you know, life is short and uh, all too short and we like having a good time. So when it's when it stops being that, yeah. You won't see us anymore. Yeah, you right do something now, else. Right, you change occupations. Exactly. <laughs> Well, you play a bunch of different instruments. It's not like you're you're locked into that bass. Uh, I, you know, with all the all your experiences in, in music over the years, uh, are there any any moments that stick out for you? I, I I don't know. I'm thinking about Woodstock. I mean, what was that like? It was pretty chaotic. We uh, we got there. The the event was already underway and already out of control. <laughs> right. Sure. Uh, we sort of just fit in. Tried to fit in with the uh, with the rest of it, and you know, look forward to getting our our show on. Um, but uh, it was one of those events where you just kind of had to go with the flow. You couldn't you couldn't expect it to be uh, you know tight and and uh, on time. Yeah, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. You know, forget all that stuff. It it just uh, it runs a little. Uh, you know, it has its own clock. Sure. We got through it all right, though. We had some friends taking care of us up there. Bill Graham uh, and his people were taking good care of us at Woodstock. Uh, they were there uh, to support Santana. I see. Who right. We all knew all those guys from the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. So. Sure. Uh, we were in good hands, and I thought we played a pretty good show. It was a little late at night, but we were young. I guess you grew up in San Francisco, in the San Francisco area. Sure, I was born in Oakland, California. Yeah, sure. And and can you give me maybe an early memory of of when the light came on for you? you went, oh, what? Hope, what's this thing? I'm hearing it. It's, <laughs> I want to do this. Okay, my my seminal moment, and uh, you know, I think that got me started on the path that I've that I've taken with my life was uh, my folks got my brother and I for Christmas. When well, you're mainly for me, and of course he wanted to do whatever I wanted to do, so I got. Uh, for Christmas, uh, tickets uh, to see uh, Ray Charles in concert. Oh wow! Yeah, it, it was uh, it, you know completely knocked me out. The, the hit at the time was uh, "What I Say." Oh yeah, oh of course. And so that was that was sometime in the fifties, I guess. Uh, you know, fifty-seven, something like that. Fifty-eight. I don't remember exactly when, but that changed my life. I started taking piano lessons. Before that, I was a trumpet player. And I uh, started taking piano lessons, you know, to, I wanted to play that music like Ray Charles did. You do it all. I mean, you're, <laughs> it, well, I mean, just the fact that you can go from bounce from one thing to another, the, I think a lot of uh, musicians would go, oh, okay, I'd like to be able to do that. <laughs> uh, you know, you'd be surprised. I think everybody kind of picks up a little bit. You know, we don't all become really accomplished uh on these other instruments, you know, the secondary ones, but they're fun to mess around with. And for me, I think, I think you know, pr- piano is uh, is sort of the mother of all instruments in terms of if you want to learn about music. And my dad used to beat me up all the time. He said, you know, you're a jack of all trades and master of none. And I said, well, you know, <laughs> I'd like to know a little bit about everything. I don't, I don't really care about being an expert at anything. <laughs> I see. In, any instruments in your collection that you could live without? Like if an airline lost one of one of them, God forbid, you know. They're just guitars. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, it's funny how uh, over the years I've collected some, uh, and, the, and the, you know, the, the newest one just replaces the previous one. Oh, okay. And so I enjoy playing the, the one I'm playing and uh, will continue to play it until something replaces it. I, I pay... For you know, for storage space to, uh, to 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 keep them. Well, I mentioned a few minutes ago that you were a producer on some things, and I, I personally, I I love that country sound of Southern Pacific. That oh, you're... thanks. Yeah, I was a co-producer on some of that stuff. The project that I'm the most proud of is uh, my work with Rocky Erickson. Pleasant memories of that that time in your life, or no? Yeah, I was. You know, I felt that I was in danger of becoming good at something. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was that was pretty exciting working with Rocky. Uh, we I thought we did some pioneering uh, uh, stuff together. It's just, I think it's certainly his best record as a solo artist, you know, since the Thirteenth Floor Elevator uh, period in, in his career. But an absolute monster singer, interesting songwriter. I think we all remember uh, 13th Floor Elevator, uh, that period in the 60s when that, that psychedelic sound was really hot. And, but I guess in the, by the time the 70s rolled around, it hit, the dynamic had all changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so, so you helped him find that sound, I guess. Well, you know, he had a band, and he was playing live, and I just kind of helped whip him into shape and, and organize the material a little bit better so that uh, helped him, uh, you know, the job of a producer. Help help the artist uh, achieve their vision. Sure. Well, obviously, you're pretty good with that because you've acted as producer in a bunch of different projects. I didn't think I'd ever be a- asking Stu Cook uh, about his relationship with the Rolling Stones. Oh, that's a good story. You're not going to ask me, are you? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when Bill Wyman quit the band, I guess in the the mid early early to mid '80s, I think it was or '83, something like that. Yeah, I think that's right. Was it 93? Oh, no, no, it was 93. Yes, right, you're right. There you go. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you lose 10 years here. <laughs> Big deal. Uh, I got an invite from Mick Jagger to come uh, audition to replace, uh, you know, to, uh, Bill in the band. But I didn't know what to think of it. But anyway, I said, yeah, I'd love to come. And so uh, we had a brief phone chat about it, and he advised me that attorneys and managers weren't welcome. <laughs> You know? <laughs> it was funny. And, uh, no attorneys and no managers. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I, you know, I'm living in LA at the time. I get down to the airport and ready to board the plane. I say, "Hey, wait a minute! I know that long-haired guy over there." And it was uh, Timothy B. Schmidt from the Eagles. Is that right? He got the same phone call I did. I oh know, no! <laughs> well, how many guys got that phone call? Right? Where was that? Where did that happen? New York City. Okay, so you flew to New York, and you're yeah, there with a bunch Timmy, of other... Timmy and I uh, sat next to each other, and, and you know, I've known Tim since, gosh, uh, the mid-60s. He used to play in a band up in Sacramento, California, and we were down in the Berkeley, California area. So we played a lot of shows together and then knew each other uh, over the years uh, as you know, Bay Area bands trying to get recognized and come up with a, you know, a record that radio would play and so on, but... So, you know, we went out to dinner when we got to New York, and, and, and that's pretty much the last time I've seen him, but, you know, neither one of us got the job. But, so I'm jamming with the Stones for a couple hours and, <laughs> uh, down at Studio Instrument Rentals, and we're having a great time. And, you know, I'm just calling out Stones tunes that I want to play, right? And I called out, let's play Connection. Let's, what do you, I'm thinking, and Mix guy comes over and whispers in my ear, that's a Keith song. That's a Keith song. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. Oops. 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 <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so, you know, we play some other song and let's play this, let's play that. And the mix guy comes over and whispers in my ear, Mick says the audition is done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was no there was no week long wait for you to find out if you got the, the gig. No, was... so, you know, we spoke to Fat Joint and then off I went and in came the next guy. Oh my uh, god. And, uh, you know, I never, you know, that was the last I heard of him. And, and of course, they hired uh, Daryl Jones, a g- great studio. Oh, yeah, he's guy. and he's great. But yeah, I, he's, been, he's been with them for years. But, you know, he's not a member of the band. He's, he's just part of their, their musical team. Sure. And uh, But it was a good time, you know, hanging out with those guys, you know, playing, playing with Charlie. Uh, I mean, it was like a dream come true, right? I've been a huge Stones fan. I still am a huge Stones fan. Uh, all my life I've probably seen him, you know, maybe – eight or ten times in concert uh interesting yeah so yeah i got a, i got a chance to uh to, to hang and jam with my heroes for a little while you obviously you've been doing this a long long time and you obviously still love it am i right well that's pretty much all i know <laughs> i see yeah, so I yeah do lo- i do love it of course well you know you could be bagging groceries somewhere but that just wouldn't sure. that that wouldn't be the thing for you that would not be no. that would not be what Stu cook should be doing you know i've never really had a job <laughs> he says tongue-in-cheek <laughs> no, i never have i've always been in in credence up there jamming <laughs> well as it turns out uh that's true 
Tell me about the moment when you came up with the idea of uh, Creedence Clearwater Revisited. Uh, was that like early 90s, somewhere around that audition period with the no, Stones? No, actually, Doug and I started working on it in, I want to say, 94, the end okay. of 94. Uh, I just moved up to Lake Tahoe, a little town up there where he'd been living for 20 years. And we started hanging out together every day, and you know, we knew we were going to get into trouble. We, just, we didn't realize that 21 years later we'd still be doing it, uh, but that's how long the Revisited Project's been on the road. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, it really is. Uh, how about the current band lineup? Uh, you know, same as when it started? Same bunch uh, of guys? Pretty much. Uh, we've only had one, uh, one replay. We've had the, the lead guitar has now been, uh, there's been three lead guitar players. Elliot Easton from the Cars. Oh, of course. Was with us for 10 years. And then he went uh, with a Cars reunion. I remember the new Cars. Right. Uh, then, uh, then he went with the old Cars after that. Yes. Uh, uh, with Rick Ocasek, Ocasek as it's pronounced. Uh, then uh, a guy named Tal Morris was with us for four or five years. And now we got Kurt Griffey uh, slinging the guitar and... Uh, He's doing a great job for us. Been with us about four or five years as well. Maybe we can tempt somebody who's on the fence about going to your concert Sunday. There's people on the fence? Well, possibly. Possibly. Maybe they're going, well, should I buy groceries this week or should I go see Creedence Clearwater Revisited? Well, that's a, <laughs> you know, that's a tough one. That is tough. Come see the band. You know, we'll buy you a meal. <laughs> there you go. You're going to get to go out with Stu Cook. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Without completely giving away what will be happening at Ferguson Center in Newport News, can you give us a teaser of what to expect? Maybe is it all Creedence Clearwater Revival songs? Uh, there, yeah, it's all Creedence all night. All Creedence uh, all night. These are not, you know, they're they're songs from the catalog. Gotcha. And so uh, it's about a ninety-minute show, and maybe a hundred. Uh, you know, and. Uh, we just have a good time. We invite people to come have a good time with us. It's uh, nothing serious. So if you're feeling energetic, it may last a lot longer than 90 minutes. Well. Depending on the vibe. <laughs> it's all about the vibe in the room. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we don't have too many rules, and you know, we try and keep it simple. So uh, we, the, the most important thing is getting the audience involved and uh, having some fun. Yeah, some hand clapping, some singing along, I'm sure. It's rock and roll. All right, if you're not having a good time, then j let's bring the house lights up and call it a day. But I'm sure it's like nonstop fun at these shows. I think so. I mean, I really do. Uh, I don't hold back. I mean, I, we're, we're too old to be hedging our bets on this stuff. Sure. Fully, fully committed to, uh, to rock in the house every night. And you're seeing some some older people, some middle aged people, some some young people, young young people, no doubt. Oh, absolutely! Uh, three solid generations of uh, of fans now working th on four. You think about that for a minute, man. You think about how this music transcends. I mean, you've got you know multi generational thing going on here. That's got to give you goosebumps. It's a it's a real blessing. You know, we had nobody had any idea that 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 anybody would even remember us i mean we had some hits and we were popular and but you know life moves on popular music changes sure every every decade or sooner right <laughs> and and honestly the older people aren't supposed to like the new music i mean that's the whole point of it really uh each, each age group uh has its own music but somehow credence has survived and 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 picked up a, a new larger audience than, uh, than ever. It's been such a pleasure. I can't tell you, this does my heart good just talking to you today. Thank, the legendary Stu Cook, we'll see you Sunday night. Perfect. Everybody come on down. We're going to have a great time. If not, we'll try again on Monday. <laughs>